Hello, my name is Jake Freestone. I'm the farm manager at Overbury Farms and we're a leaf demonstration farm, leaf being linking environment and farming. Today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we manage our water here at Overbury. This guidebook on simply sustainable water has been developed by Leaf in conjunction with ASDA and the Molson Coors Brewing Company. The booklet is divided up into six simple steps, the first one being water saving. So let's have a look at how we save water at Overbury. Here we are at Park Farm, where we've invested in some rainwater harvesting technology. In 2011, we invested in an extra bay extension into the lambing sheds here at Overbury. And part of that investment was some rainwater harvesting technology. So we invested in two 10,000 litre harvesting tanks, which are fed from the valley gutter. When they fill up, any overflow comes out and goes into a soak away. This water is used to water sheep when they're being housed in the sheds here or when they're in individual pens or groups of pens out in the farmyard. Water is used from the tank through the outlet at the bottom here. At the moment it's frost protected, we're in the middle of the winter, we're expecting some cold weather coming forward and that's quite an important point to mention as water saving, uh, trying to reduce the risk of burst pipes that can then leak a lot of water in a very short space of time. Step two is about protecting your water sources and we have an integrated farming approach that covers that subject. Integrated farm management, what's it all about? Well here is a classic example of how we put that into practice. Behind me we have a stream which is spring fed from the hill and we use some integrated techniques to help preserve the water quality. The first one is what I'm standing on. We've got a grass tussocky margin which acts to intercept pesticides and fertiliser from the arable field to my left. The other side of the hedge, we've actually got a pollen and nectar high level stewardship margin, which again can help provide insect feed and cover for, for birds, as well as intercepting and protecting the water running down through this bit of a valley. Soil is a key aspect of water management. Step three is all about soil management for water quality. Here we have a cover crop of mustard, which benefits water quality in two ways. Firstly, it locks up nutrients within the field, so they can't be washed away, particularly in periods of heavy rainfall. The second benefit is that it stops soil erosion down the slope. So if you can leave stubble or plant a catch cover crop like this, you're intercepting the rainfall, reducing soil erosion and potential silting and taking nutrients and pesticides down into the watercourse. So where you have an opportunity for spring cropping, it might be something to consider. With all the wet weather we've been having, land drainage is something that we're paying particular attention to. Step four is drainage, and I would also include ditching in that as well. Here is a good example of a silt trap that we've created along one of the many field ditches we have on the farm. Its purpose was to widen and deepen the ditch to slow the water down. With the water moving at a slower pace, any soil particles held within the water can sink to the bottom, taking any pesticide or fertiliser attached to them with them. These silt traps can then be muddied out periodically and returned back to the field. So, as the water exits the silt trap, it returns to the natural ditch line previously here. Then it gets to the next bit, which is equally as important, and this is a reed bed. Now we started digging this in March 2011, when there was no water flow through this ditch. 12 months ago, we excavated over 150 tonnes of soil from these two areas of the farm. We instated the reed beds, and as you can see, the reeds have still to get to full size and maturity. In time, the reeds will develop to cover this whole area. They'll then provide a habitat for birds like reed buntings and also great insect habitat. So as the water passes through the reed beds, it's being cleaned, the reeds are taking any fertiliser and nutrients out of the water. The water then returns to the existing ditch and heads off down to the local brook. The theory says that this water should have a higher quality, but it's very important for us as land managers to monitor that. Step five is tracking water use or monitoring. This is a very important management tool, primarily to work out if you're losing water from your system, which can indeed cost you a lot of money 
over a very short period of time. Whenever we're doing more water repairs on the farm now, we'll try and put meters in so we can accurately monitor any loss between sections within the farm supply. The other area of monitoring which we do a lot of is the quality of water. So we have nitrate and phosphate kits that we can analyse water as it leaves the farm and actually as it arrives on the farm to work out what impact our farming systems are having on that water quality. Step six is water availability and sunshine hours. There's nothing you can do about how the rainfall falls on your farm, but it is very important to be aware of the impact that it can have on your soil and water quality. The other angle is sunshine hours. We're looking at investing in a weather station to record sunshine and rainfall and aspects of the weather. This is very, very important when you look at the whole integrated farming approach so that we have a record of how our crops performed under certain weather circumstances. From this, we can use that information in subsequent years to potentially manage our crops to a better degree. So we as farmers and land managers are having increasing challenges with the yo-yo effect of drought and periods of heavy rainfall. This guide, Simply Sustainable Water, gives some very clear tips as to the first stages that you might want to take on on your farms to try and manage water more effectively, be a better environmental asset uh, and the quality of that water can also in improve. This guide is available to download from www.leafuk.org. If you want to know more about how we're continuing at Overbury Farms, do follow my blog uh, or follow on Twitter at number one farmerjake.